The Goat House is back with score predictions and picks against the spread for every single NFL game in week four. And we are here every Wednesday with this video. Usually love week four because we're kind of getting past the sloppiness and onto the real football where we can separate the men from the boys. Let's take a look at all my picks for this week. Thursday night football, the Cowboys at the Giants. The Cowboys are favored by five, and I do like the boys in this one. The Giants are actually playing better football than Dallas right now, and I do think the Giants are maybe a little better, a little tougher than what people think. They've shown improvement improvements every week, but not, not so much this week. I'm not believing in them. You know, following some trends here because that seems to be what's happening so far this year. The Bills always beat the Dolphins. Check. Brock Purdy can't beat the Vikings, check. The Vikings have never lost to the Texans, check. Andy Dalton's never lost to the Raiders, and there's been several of these instances, and the Cowboys are streaking against the Giants, and specifically in prime time in New York, the Giants just have a big problem with these Cowboys. So, And the Cowboys turn it around. Dak has a big game. CeeDee Lamb's going to have a monster game. I think Cooks can play play well. I'd like to see if Dallas gets Rico Dowdle going a little bit more. I think he actually could have a solid game. The Cowboys are really struggling to stop the run. And they could in this game, but the Giants have to stay in the game for them to be able to keep running the ball. I th I'm kind of banking on the Cowboys getting an early lead, being too explosive on offense. The Giants are also beat up at the corner position, including their standout rookie, Drew Phillips, who's looked very good. So they're beat up there. Short week. Don't think him or Dory Jackson are going to play. Cowboys offense in a matchup that seems to always favor them in recent years with these players. I'll take the Cowboys putting up some points, 30 to 17. So I like them covering that five. It's moving up. I think it started at four or four and a half. On to the Sunday slate, a real good one in the NFC South. The Saints versus the Falcons. I think the Falcons are a little better than the record shows. They've shown that on the field. The Saints looked like the best team in football through two weeks. Do they still got some of that juice in them? I had an interesting, rare, unique prediction for this one, and that is I think it's a flip of a coin game. Like either team could win. I could definitely argue either side, but I think the winner wins by a decent amount, at least six, maybe seven, even 10. I could see them winning by an ass beating them out. And just because how these teams operate, how they play, mainly the Saints, because they're a run first team. I mean, the games that they won big, they got a lead early and that fit to their strengths. Run, 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 get yards, you know, prolong drives drain the clock and so they kind of rely on that a little bit but if they get a 10 nothing lead the Falcons aren't the strongest stop in the run they're going to keep doing that and they're, they're probably going to win big like the first two weeks if they do that but if the Saints get down early if the Falcons have success early then the Saints you kind of make them uncomfortable they have to throw the ball Remember in those big wins their car wasn't dropping back to throw that many times. Like, it wasn't a ton of times. So, you're making them uncomfortable, and they got to try to come from behind while they're more of a pass-first team. That's really not them. So, the Falcons could win big if that's the case. I think the Falcons will have success. You know, both teams are beat up on the offensive line, but Kirk Cousins has done well against that Saints man coverage defense in the past. I do think they'll run the ball effectively. We saw Barkley did to the Saints last week. Maybe they get Pitts going after they saw what Goddard did. Uh, I like the secondary of the Falcons. Raheem Morris' defense a little more complex for Derek Carr to deal with. Jesse Bates has given Carr uh, issues You know, last year. They have Justin Simmons back there as well. So ATL in ATL, I will take them. It's one I, would, I wouldn't take because it's basically a pick em almost with the one and a half spread. And again, it can go either. It's going to be who, get, who gets a two possession lead first if it happens. It could end up being back and forth, one possession, but that's what it's going to be. So the Saints relying on scoring first, keeping that run game alive. Uh, so they're, they're relying on a little bit more, I think, than the Falcons. And the Falcons look pretty good. They're just one and two right now. But they're going to continue to get better here. That should be a really good game uh, that could go either way. Can't wait for that one. Rams and Bears, which could be a little bit of a trap game because you think the Rams are better even though they're beat up. But the Bears are fair by a whopping three right now. It actually went up a half point since Keenan Allen is supposed to play. How good is, how active is he going to be though? Where is he at with his health at his age? There was some doubts about him heading into the season. Then he was a little banged up. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the Bears got a little bit of offensive production going last week. They still made a lot of mistakes. So, you know, the Rams are really beat up. The defense isn't that great. So Caleb Williams might be able to do some damage, but the offensive line struggling. Caleb makes some bad mistakes here and there. He's focused on pressure a lot of the time and the running game can't get anything going. It's hard to trust the Bears right now. I'm going to trust Matt Stafford, uh, you know, just balling out the way he did last week, come from behind, winning that game. And Kyron Williams should be able to do some damage. Jonathan Taylor did some damage against them. 
Uh, defense going to have to step up a little bit. It'll be a close game. I like the Rams. It's harder to – I could see the Bears winning. That's why we'll pass on it, even though, I, even though the Rams are getting points and I have them winning. I'm still going to pass. Seems like a trap. Vegas thinks it's a trap game, but – I'll take I'll take the more experienced quarterback in this one. We'll take we'll take the Rams 23 to 20 against the Bears. Vikings versus Packers should be a battle. Another one that can go either way. The end, top of the NFC North looks really really good. The Vikings maybe maybe the hottest team in football right now. I'm going to take the Packers in this one if Jordan Love plays. A little bit of a kind of a gut feeling in Green Bay. The Vikings after being home two weeks in a row kind of due for a loss. Got to go play on grass for the first time this year. Uh, Darnold's been awesome. I think the Packers could, you know, defense playmaking defense could put him in some uncomfortable situations. I think still think he plays all right, but in the Packers have a really good game plan. Um, at the end of last year, they kind of figured out how to, how to move the ball on Brian Flores' defense. It does seem a lot better now, though. So if this was in Minnesota, I'd be going with the Vikings. Uh, it's in Green Bay. If they have love, I'll take the Packers. Uh, it's going to be right around that line. I, I feel more comfortable taking the Vikings with the points, kind of like we did last week, because it could go either way uh, if they can win. But I'm going to pass on that game. Uh, I think maybe a little lower scoring than people think. I mean... Yeah, Vikings play really good defense. Jordan Love coming back from injury, uh, but the Packers defense looks really good. Darnold maybe, uh, you know, could turn the ball over. We've seen that a little bit. Aaron Jones revenge game, possibly it's not too much of a revenge. He's, he was in Green Bay for a long time, but we'll see how how he plays this week. But yeah, it should be a pretty good one here in Lambeau. I will take the Packers if Malik Willis plays. I will definitely take the Vikings. But yeah, another one of those games that could go either way. Wouldn't touch it in terms of betting. Steelers and Colts. Can the Steelers stay undefeated? I said in the picks video, this could be a little bit of a trap game, even though I picked the Steelers still. And it seems like Vegas thinks the same thing with the surprising one and a half spread in favor of the Steelers. So tough to stay undefeated. You got to go to Indy. They got a little hot after last week. Their offensive line is playing as good as anyone in football right now, run blocking and pass and pass protection. And it's a unique running game that game planned pretty well last year against the Steelers as well. So they got to, you know, Steelers, great defense. They got to deal with Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Taylor, a little misdirection, you know, running quarterback. So that could be the reason the Colts do it, but the Colts running game hasn't seen the Steelers yet. This looks like, looks like the top defense in football. Um, you know, I know they played a good Bears defense last week, but in terms of running the ball, this year's defensive line is much, much better. I, I do think the Colts will have some success on the ground. It could be the toughest challenge on the ground for the Steelers defense yet, but matchup favors them. Best defense football right now. Uh, and offensively, I, I don't trust the Colts' defense still, mainly with the run, especially with DeForest Buckner out. The Bears just cannot run the football. The Steelers can with, with Justin Fields even uh, and Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. Those guys will have success. They'll out-physical the Colts up front, uh, and, and they will they, they should squeak by. I think it's going to be really close, though. I could see a game-winning Boswell field goal making it 20-17. So it, when touch it, it seems a little of a sneaky game. Vegas agrees with that line, so it's not just me there. I'm sure some of you out there kind of agree that – could it be a trap game here in week four? We will see. But I, I got to go at Pittsburgh. Tough to pick against them in this matchup. Broncos and Jets. Nathaniel Hackett game. I think Nathaniel Hackett gets revenge once again here. And they win 27-16. I think it very much favors the Jets who really picked it up last week. It's going to be somewhat of a similar matchup you know, as playing the Patriots. Jets are clicking on all phases right now. The Broncos... Really picked it up last week. They really picked it up. They they got how they beat the Bucks. They outplayed them, the obvious part. But they got a good lead early and kind of limited the run because they can't stop the run. But they limited the Bucks' chances to run because they had to come from behind. But they were still running here and there, and they were ripping off explosive runs. So the Broncos, for them to take their weakness away. They have to get a big lead early. I don't think that's going to happen against the Jets. The Jets got a one-two punch at running back. They even put both of them in the backfield at the same time, Hall and Allen. That's going to be a major factor in this game. The Broncos aren't going to be able to stop that, those guys. And Bo Nix really picked it up last week. That was good to see, but you're playing a totally different defense in the Jets' defense this week So in New York. So I like... I like the Jets taking care of business, 27 to 16. So I would uh, bet on the Jets money line. Obviously, you have to pair that with something. So use the Jets at home, uh, and have them cover that seven and a half. That's a lot of points, though, to actually throw money on that line exactly. But use the Jets in a parlay, parlay, excuse me, money line parlay this week because they should be a lock to win here in Week Four, being the far better team with the far better matchup. 
Eagles and Bucks, a tricky one right now. This this is a prediction that could change because there's so many injuries that could be a factor in this one. You look at the Eagles on offense with their two star receivers, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, and their star tackle, Lane Johnson. But you look at the Bucks on defense, Antoine Whitfield Jr., they're missing multiple, you know, guys in the secondary, you know, corners that have already gone down. Vita Vea is a little beat up. That's a big one in this one. That one of the best run stoppers in football going against one of the best rushing teams in football. So Little, it's going to depend. Like, if Eagles are missing both their receivers, like maybe I want to go Bucks, but the Bucks are missing their star defensive players, maybe I want to go Eagles. But I like the way the Eagles match up overall. I, I think they they should be able to run the football effectively with Barkley, who's unreal right now, and Hurts in control of this game. The defense seems to be better than last year as well. Looking at last week against the Saints, a little tougher of an offensive opponent here. But the Bucks' offensive line played great in week one, but not so much last two weeks. The Eagles' defensive line picked it up a little bit, so that's a little bit of a concern for Tampa as well. So I'm favoring the Eagles right now. Uh, wouldn't bet on it, and we kind of got to wait and see who's in, who's out. Also, also, Vic Fangio's defense is very, very similar to Vance Josephs, who is the defensive coordinator of the Broncos. Like, doesn't mean the same exact thing's going to happen, but those are very sk- similar schemes, coverages, a lot of cover three. Uh, so that didn't work well with the Bucks last week. I do think that was a random just slip up. I don't think that's the real Bucks, but still, some of that's kind of still sitting in my mind a little bit. And the Eagles. Eagles are going to get going. They're really going to get going at some point here. It's really going to depend on the injury. So for right now, I got the Eagles 23, the Buccaneers 20, and what should be a pretty good game. The 0-3 Bengals take on the Carolina Panthers. And Andy Dalton, in his revenge game, he lit it up against the Raiders last week. But I love the Bengals in this one. I know they're 0-3. It's weird betting on an 0-3 team. And I didn't like this one at first. I think the line started at like 6.5 and and trickled down a little bit. But at 4.5... I like it. I like the way they match up. The Bengals' offense, even though they're 0-3, the offense was great last week. That was a Bengals' offense right there. Joe Burrow throwing perfect balls. I don't care who the defense was. You know, Jamar Chase getting going. T. Higgins back and getting going. The running backs look good. I mean, Kasicki's a weapon. There's multiple weapons in that offense. It's going to be just fine. And the Panthers really do not have a pass rush. They, It's non-existent, so... They're pretty decent in coverage, but how long are they going to have to cover against Joe Burrow who can drop a ball in the bucket? I'd say better than anyone. I think if there's a guy that throws the bat, like the the perfect ball, the most times out of you know, per pass attempt, I'd probably say it's Joe Burrow in the league. So the lack of pass rush for the Panthers really gets me on this one, and I do think the Bengals could run the ball if they wanted to as well. They're going to score points. And the Panthers, on you know, love Dave Canales' offense. The Bengals' defense is a little sus right now. I think they pass defense. I think they were too worried about Jaden Daniels scrambling and running around and kind of keeping drives alive and then dumping it off. Andy Dalton's not going to do that. He can throw the ball well, but I don't think he's going to prolong a play like Jaden Daniels was. So that kind of makes a difference where I where I worry about a little more for the Bengals defense, not not actually the pass defense, but the uh, the run defense because they're not great as it is and they're beat up in the interior. So Hubbard could feast again. But the Panthers cannot get down, and the Bengals are going to score rapidly, easily on offense where the Panthers are down, and they can't run as much as they want to. So I do like Cincinnati. I don't want to get too high on the Bengals off one game, but I do love Canales' offense, his system, his scheme. It works. So I'm going to take Cincinnati minus 4.5, and, and I'm going to take their team total over at, of 26.5. That was low, set pretty low, uh, because I think the least they score is 27, but... I guess how that doesn't happen if the Panthers get the ball first and they just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, drain the clock, keep going on drives, and that makes it a lower scoring game. But the Bengals, we saw it even against the Commanders, they can score in one play. You know, they can they can do that. So I think they'll have a lot of success on offense. So thirty to nineteen, Cincinnati gets their first win. And the Bengals always start slow. And I mean they played well at the same time against the Chiefs and the Commanders, but now's the time of the Bengals really get going. So I think they can be you know, even better than how they looked the past couple games, and they looked really good on offense. So we'll see. But I got Cincy. Jags and Texans, they both slipped up last week. Well, the Jags been slipping up. Looked like one of the worst teams in football. The Texans looked kind of brutal last week, uh, but they did play the Vikings. I think the Texans bounced back in this one. Jags, Lawrence is struggling. Offensive line struggling. I keep talking about this. Doug Peterson struggling. I mean, where is the pass rush? I'm very surprised about this. Maybe a little bit too much man coverage from them. The Texans take advantage of that. Nico Collins has a big game in this one. We'll see if Joe Mixon's back or not. 
but the Texans should have some success on offense. And the Jags, I mean, 0 and 3. That's why the 0 and, you know, playing these teams that are 0 and 3, even last week, some of the 0 and 2 teams surprised. It's tough playing those teams because things are going so poorly that they kind of just change everything. They sit down like, all right, we gotta, we're not gonna keep riding this out because it's not working. Let's change it, and the team doesn't have that stuff on film. So I think that's where the Jags are at in this game. There's a lot of frustration we saw last week in the game like on the field and on the sideline. So I think they they tweak some things, they get a little creative, and then they might be able to put up some points. But they're just not good enough to beat Houston. And Houston, in my opinion, Texans are just a much better team, and they'll have more success on offense. But I do like the over. It could be a little close, but I really think the Texans have success through the air. And if Mixon is playing, they'll have plenty on the ground. Uh, and the Jags again, I think they're going to tweak things. And Doug Peterson's kind of going to go all out, um, you know, with this group this week because they absolutely have to. So I think they'll find some success. Uh, on offense as well so that's why I think it should go over but I have Houston winning this game at home we got a good one here commanders at Cardinals the commanders look pretty damn good against the Bengals at least offensively Jane Daniels looks like their franchise quarterback looks like they have themselves a quarterback they got playmakers you know they could they're explosive they can play they convert third downs fourth downs I love that you know just keep plays alive you know mainly credit to Daniels on that one uh, and the Cardinals who I think are a pretty good team they're better than their record they're one and two I think they're better than their record they uh, they can play on both sides of the ball more so on offense but they kind of stuck with the lines in that game the Commanders I'm excited about them they can be sneaky this year they're only going to get better love the love the future there. I do not love the matchup for them in this game I love the Cardinals in this game in Arizona. Why the Cardinals lost against the Lions last week? I mean, the Lions were, I mean, specifically, Cardinals couldn't run the ball. Lions are one of the very, very best stopping to run, and that's a big part of this Cardinals offense uh, post Kingsbury, who they're playing against, era. Running the ball is massive for them. Like, Murray, it's not one of those teams where the quarterback needs it to have success. Murray can do things on his own. But for this offense, for the, these play callers, the system to work, got to be able to run the ball. The commander's defense in general is atrocious right now. They couldn't stop the Bengals running back duo, which isn't the best in, in football. It's decent. Uh, the Bengals also threw on them. So I, I think James Conner gets going. That run game will be alive for the Cardinals. But another big, big factor. I mean, Kyler Murray's playing very good. Marvin Harrison's picking it up. They have speed. They have so much speed. Those guys, that offense loves to play against man coverage. They they dream teams will play man coverage. Dan Quinn runs as much man coverage as anyone. It's why that secondary is getting torched because those corners aren't good enough to play that much man coverage in the NFL right now. In the Cardinals, Murray with his legs, you know, scrambling quarterbacks against man coverage, amazing. You know, that that'll be a big factor in this one. I do think the Commanders will score. The Cardinals could be a little sus stopping to run in this game, so that'd be the Commanders' best bet is Come out and pound the football. Brian Robinson, hopefully Eckler's okay. And just drain the clock and limit the Cardinals' high-powered offense. That That's why the Commanders could win this game. But in Arizona, Cardinals are the better team despite the record not showing it. Love the way they match up. I actually have them covering that three. And it, you know, people are really high in the Commanders. People people probably bet in the Commanders. So I, I like it even more because of that. Because that seems to be how it goes. Uh, when everyone's up on someone, putting their money on someone, the opposite happens. Happens quite a bit. So uh, I will take the Cardinals in what could be a good one, 31-24. And it would look like the over would be a hit here, and I'm predicting it to go over, but it also could be one of those games where, yeah, the commanders just run, 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 and the Cardinals just James Conner, pound it, Murray's running, and you drain the clock a lot. So that's why it's a, I'm not going to say bet on the over, even though I do have it with the score. Can't wait for this game. Patriots and Niners. The Niners let one slip away last week. They're not going to do it again, even though they're very, very beat up. The Patriots kind of came back down to earth last week. It looked like one of the worst teams in football. Just not much going for that old line, not much going for Jacoby Brissett, and not even much going for that running game. And defensively, they're okay, but they could be beat. I don't see them. I think Bosa has a day. I don't see them scoring a ton of points. This one got them at 13. The Niners will do just enough. I think Purdy plays a solid game. They get Jordan Mason going a little, even more this week, and so they take care of business in somewhat of a low-scoring game. So I'm confident with the Niners, so I would throw that. We have the Jets' money line as well as, as a lock, so uh, you can throw that in as one of your legs in your parlay there uh, for the Niners. The Niners lose this game. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, we're going to feel weird because we're probably going to go, all right, the Patriots have kind of three weeks of looking decent and that one week of looking like who we thought they were and the Niners would be one and three. Like, we'd be time for some panic and just confusion, confusion for both sides, but not expecting it. 
Niners at home. They were away last week. They're at home 24-13. Maybe the toughest game to pick this week, the Browns and the Raiders. We have to monitor some injuries, specifically Miles Garrett. He is listed with several injuries. He plans to play through it. And he was playing through an injury last week, and he was getting constant pressure on Daniel Jones. So as of right now, I'm going with Miles Garrett playing. If he's not playing, and Max Crosby is, because I would imagine he is, but he's dealing with a little bit of something, but it's pretty damn close to a lock that he's playing. Uh, I would take the Raiders in that case if Miles Garrett's out. But I'll take the Browns in a 50-50 game here. They're actually getting a point and a half. I'll just say points, so not much of points, but... Yeah, it's a tough one that can go either way. The Raiders are in a little bit of a streak against the Browns, so maybe want to go want to go with the Raiders. Uh, but the Raiders are so one dimensional, and it even feels funny saying that because sometimes they don't have the passing game. They have the worst running game in football, and the Browns defense is so damn good on paper, but a little underwhelming at times. But they love playing against the pass. So if they could focus on the pass with what they do best, rushing the passer in coverage because they have a loaded secondary and not have to worry about the run, they can play their game to their best of their ability. So that's why I love the way the Browns' defense matches up in this one. Offensively, they cannot protect Watson. They're super sloppy, making insane mistakes over and over again. The pass prote- and There's more injuries on the O-line, Wyatt Teller, but the pass protection has me worried a little bit. But... The Browns are just more talented in a game like this. Uh, Stefanski's probably got some tricks up his sleeve. He's been he's kind of been up and down. Like one second, like that's a really good coach. One second, it's like he's a bad coach. Do we fire? You got to fire him. And then, so, but I, I think it's a breakout game for Stefanski, kind of pulling out some tricks up his sleeves. Amari Cooper got going last game. I think Watson gets going a little bit more. Nothing great. And the Browns just because of raw talent and the way the second the, the pass defense kind of matches up and can play to their strengths, they pull it off twenty to seventeen. I don't know how to feel about Antonio Pierce kind of. Saying uh, the players aren't playing with the motor. He's like pissed off about it. Uh, and then saying we might switch quarterbacks here in the near future. Like, I don't love that, but it also can light a fire beneath them. So I'm not really sure how to feel about it going into this game. Uh, it's a don't bet. It's a hard pass on this game in terms of betting. Uh, but the re- for the reasons I explained, I-, I, went with- I went with Cleveland in this one. Go ahead and check out our straight up picks with the other guys that joined me. That's on the video that recently went up. We also have power rankings and a lot more. Make sure to turn, not- turn notifications on so you don't miss any of the content we got. We got more than anyone. Chiefs and Chargers. The Chargers are really beat up. We'll see who plays, who doesn't. Beat up at tackle with you know Bosa as well off the edge and Herbert and now Derwin James, who would probably be covering Kelsey most of the time, is suspended. That was pretty unfortunate. So. Chiefs had some close games. I don't think this one, and they pull away in this one, 26-16, quite a few field goals in this one. So I'm confident with the Chiefs winning. I have them covering, but that's a lot. It was, I think it was originally at 6.5. I would have liked that. Uh, 8 might be a little too much. I do think they cover, but it might be a little too much here, especially with how this year is going so far. But again, week four, things kind of go back to normal a little bit. And then week five, a lot of it goes back to normal. But Chiefs, another money line team that I like uh, as a possible leg for your parlay. We had quite a few of those. Well, this is our third one in this video. But the Chiefs, Chargers defense has been good. I don't think it's as good as it's looked, though. It didn't look good down the stretch of that Steelers game. So I think the Chiefs kind of take advantage. And the red zone Chargers defense could do a little damage in this one. But in the offense, there's just not enough juice there, and they're a little beat up. So Chiefs 26-16 is what I got. Could even be a bigger win than that. The Bills and the Ravens. What a game on Sunday night football. The Bills look like the best team in football right now. They're awesome. And the Ravens are very underwhelming right now. Who do I think is a better team? I think the Bills are the better team. Who do I think is a better team in the long run? Probably the Bills, honestly. But in this specific game, give me the Ravens all day in this one. I made it sound like it's a guarantee. But you know, not. I'm, I'm a little confident with the Ravens. In our picks video, I picked the Ravens all by myself. That doesn't look good, but if you've been following us for years, I have a high percentage win rate when I pick, well, for some reason, when I pick games, I'm on a team by myself, 1-0 already this year, like 90% rate or higher in the past. So it makes you feel a little better about it as well. Uh, but the Bills are a very good team. I almost put bet. I actually almost put bet. I think the Ravens win by at least three. Not that I see them like whooping the Bills' ass or anything, but betting against the Bills right now is just a you got to have some huge balls, huge balls to do it. Uh, but I like the way the Ravens match up. Are you kidding me? In Baltimore on Sunday night football, the Bills have dominated the last few weeks. They, and a big part of it is because they're a really good team, but they got a lead early in this game and just put the teams in obvious passing situations. The Ravens are a totally different matchup, totally different matchup. I don't see anybody on the planet getting a huge lead on the Ravens right away. I just don't see any team in the NFL any year 
against this Harbaugh team. I, I don't really see it. Watch it probably happen. I don't think so. but Because uh, I do not see it. And the Ravens will keep the run in the game. We haven't really seen it yet, but I do not trust the Bills' run defense fully. The pass defense looks really good. The Ravens could be the best rushing offense in football. You have to deal with Lamar. You have to deal with Derrick Henry and more. They will take advantage of that. They'll play lights out at home. Uh, you know, in, in this one. Defensively, they've been a little underwhelming, so I do think the Bills' offense could do some damage here, but I will take Baltimore at home, 27-24, right when everyone is all hyped. And you should be hyped on the Bills, so stay hyped on the Bills. But right when everyone's all in on the Bills, most people in the world picking them, even though Vegas has the Ravens favored, uh, I, I will take the Ravens. Monday night football, doubleheader. We got Titans and Dolphins. The other game's definitely going to be better, but... Uh, who's going to play quarterback for the Dolphins? That's a big question right now. I would like for them to play Tyler Huntley, and that could actually give him a better chance to win. I'll take the Titans. They look like the worst team in football right now. The Dolphins maybe look like the worst team in football last week, uh, you know, based on their quarterback situation. Defense actually played all right. It's going to be a defensive game. Titans defense slipped up last week, but I like their defense, especially in this game. Titans got to run the football, and I think they do that. I think Pollard and Tajay Spears do enough and help them win this game, which will be a defensive game with some field goals here. Levis. Got to take care of the ball. You turn the ball over once, you might lose the game because of it because it's going to be a close defensive game. But I will take Tennessee, figuring it out. And it was funny, I think we mentioned it in the picks video, like the Bengals are always starting really every year. They start slow, and they're 0-3 right now. They always do it. And the Titans got a Bengals coach as their head coach. I think it's kind of a coincidence. I'm not saying they're the Bengals or anything like that, but I thought that was interesting. So let's see if the Titans figure it out this week. I like the under in this one. Under 37, yeah, maybe it could be close, but Dolphins offense couldn't do anything last week, and they're playing a good they're playing a good defense. I thought the Dolphins defense played well, and they're playing against an offense that that doesn't do a whole lot, even though they can get some things going in this one. Uh, but give me Tennessee. I was a little surprised they're underdogs, uh, but we'll see who plays quarterback for uh, for the Dolphins. I guess that can decide a lot. In the last Monday night game, one I wouldn't bet on. I think it's going to be a really close game. Could go either way. Waiting on some injury news as well, you know, for both teams with the Lions. You know, Ragnow a little beat up and a few more at Laporta, a few more guys there as well. But should be a really good one. The home team decides it, I think. I think these are two really solid teams that are very explosive but actually can play defense now for a change. Uh, you know, so it being in Detroit in prime time, Monday night football, I think that's huge in this one. I love the Lions running game. They can get going. They'll get pressure. The defense playing a lot better. They get pressure on Geno, maybe create some turnovers. But I do think that the Seahawks can air it out. I think the receivers are going to have a big game. I, I Specifically, I think JSN has a monster game. The Lions defense is playing a lot better, but they are struggling with slot receivers. So watch out for that to be a difference maker. But the Lions will uh, definitely have success on the ground like they always do. And I think they'll be able to find ways to have success through the air as well. At home, give me Detroit. This was in Seattle. I'd pick the Seahawks. A crazy game like this where it's like an even battle. Uh, two explosive teams. I think the home crowd in prime time can make that difference. So plus four seems like a little bit for Seattle, but could also see the Lions winning by a touchdown, so I wouldn't bet on that. But a squeaker, 24-23. And then there's a recap of all the picks against the spread uh, on your screen right here. So a good mixture of uh, – favorites and underdogs and I put an asterisk next to the Eagles one even though I do like the Eagles and I don't count on changing it but there's so many injuries there's injuries in every game this one too that's on your screen but there are so many injuries that can change things like if the if the Bucks star defensive players play and the Eagles receivers don't okay boom we got the Bucks and if but if the you know, all the Eagles guys play you know any just a million different combinations there with some serious impact players so uh, that's an interesting one for sure but That'll wrap it up for my score predictions and picks against the spread here every Wednesday with this video. Check out our other videos for the week already up, and there's more to come. Subscribe, turn notifications on so you don't miss a thing. We got you covered with the best content there is on the channel and on, or on YouTube and on Twitter. But that will do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.